Hello, my name is Holly Sexton with Boss Lady Coaching and welcome to our podcast turned video cast because of the pandemic. But who knew this would happen and we're rolling with the flow and meeting great new boss ladies in our community. And it wouldn't be Boss Lady Coaching without our founder, Megan Stitz. So Megan, great to have you along and you brought a friend. So I'm excited to meet her. Hey, Holly. Thanks so much for the intro. I can't wait to see you more in person, but in the meantime, um, it's been great to make a new friend in the pandemic. And we have with us today, Michelle Agus. She is a military spouse, new to the community, and I've so enjoyed getting to know her as she's moved to the area and through the connections between the Knox Regional Development Alliance, KRDA, and the Lincoln Trail Career Center. Um, so many collaborations came together to introduce us and um, just looking forward to getting to talk today. I've gotten to meet her and know her over the last few months, but looking forward to introducing you all, our fantastic community, to her and all the things she has to offer our region. So welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. Well, let's start by, uh, feel free to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you, your background, and your family. Okay. Uh, my name is Michelle Agus. Um, I am a mom of two, a five-year-old girl and a two-year-old boy, so they keep me busy. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Um, my husband is in the military, so we have moved many different places um, over the last few years. I'm originally from Georgia, um, and we just recently moved to Kentucky just a couple months back from El Paso, Texas. So it's nice to be on this side of the green, have true seasons again, um, but I, I do miss El Paso. It'll always have a special place in my heart. So you got to meet Megan, which is a, a great introduction to the community, but what else has stood out to you about Fort Knox and the surrounding area? Um, I love how it's just so tight knit here. You can always find somebody to go to the park with or different Facebook groups I've joined, which has been just wonderful over the last few months, getting to get out and meet people for myself and, and my kids as well. Um, lots of different play groups, people reaching out, just, you know, just the friendly, like Southern hospitality, what I was used to at home, just, hey, we're going here. We're going to be here if anybody else wants to join. And so I felt really comfortable getting out, meeting people like that, which has been great. I've met so many people in the last few months that, you know, if I would have stayed hunkered in my house, I wouldn't have met otherwise. We need to be wearing name tags to make things easier for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, for those of us who are familiar with Fort Knox area, we, we have people that we meet that we get to know and love. And then you move, you yes. PTS somewhere, and uh, we get to keep up on social media, which is great. Um, but what's it like for you to travel from place to place and to be new to the area? Um, it is, you just basically pick up and go. Um, I'm really, really good at, at being a long distance friend, which, which sounds kind of crazy. Um, so many people that I have met are in the military. So I may know them, you know, for a couple weeks and then they move or it could be a couple years. Um, so thankfully, uh, all the technology that we have nowadays, you know, we keep up on Facebook. Um, we video chat, our kids get to still see each other and keep those connections. Um, we try to meet up uh, whenever we're close um, to each other. I actually had a friend that we were um, best friends in El Paso, and then they moved across the country to South Carolina. I'm from Georgia originally. We just happened to be um, visiting family, met up, and it was so cool just to reconnect again, have the kids get to play with each other again. It was almost as if like no time had passed. We just pick up from where we left off is the same with, with many other friends, which is a really cool thing to have in a, a friendship. You don't feel like you've missed anything. You just jump right back in. I'm so glad you've had a positive experience and felt welcome in the community so far because you know, while I don't come from a military background, uh, I moved out to Meade County specifically, but um, not a native to Kentucky. And uh, I found it kind of hard at first to, to break in. And this was, I'm starting to date myself now of like Facebook groups weren't such a thing. Uh, we didn't have all the social media tools when I first came to the Hardin County community. And uh, after a year or so, it, it really felt more like home, but that first um, kind of introduction um, felt a little bit isolating. So 
what advice would you have for people that are new to the community or going through a similar experience? Because it sounds like you've just been able to, to jump right in, which is fantastic. I've tried to be resilient in that and resourceful with, you know, what, what is around me. Um, I actually, in El Paso, joined um, a MOPS group that was out there that ended up, I was able to connect with a MOPS group here. So just meeting people through that as well has been amazing. Um, the advice I would give is just to bloom where you're planted. Uh, my mom told me that when we first went to El Paso, um, just me and my daughter, uh, she was two at the time, we moved there. Uh, my husband um, was was away at the time. And, you know, I was just like, oh my gosh, it's me and a two-year-old in a new place, family 1,500 miles away, didn't know a soul. Um, and she was like, it is okay. You know, you will bloom where you're planted. And that has always stuck with me um, through these last few years that I have to take it upon myself to get out there and meet people um, for me and, and my kids to have, have a good bond um, and good community here and just to grow from it. I love that. I need that crocheted on a pillow or something yeah. to remind me <laughs> Blue where I'm planted. So what's something you wish people understood better about being a military spouse and, a mil and having a military family that's active duty? Um, something that I wish people knew, um, kind of going back to the long distance um, thing, uh, military, or they always feel like the new kids um, going somewhere. You know, we move every, some people every couple months, depending on, on their rotation and, and trainings and whatnot, some people every few years. Um, but I would say just, um, if you know that somebody is military, just reach out to them. Hey, you know, do you want to go to the park? Hey, do you want to go grab coffee? You know, because I've tried to really put myself out there and used to, I would say pre-military life, I was pretty shy. I would not go up to you and say, hey, my name's Michelle. Do you want to go somewhere with me and my kids? Um, so that has opened me up a lot. Um, you just have to find your village um, and really make that like the anchor of where you are. There's a lot of amazing things about being part of the Army community specifically and having a community that surrounds Fort Knox. But I'll say this was all new to me. I'd never lived in a military community before. Um, I didn't have those connections within my family. So I'm uh, still learning a lot about the Army culture and what it's like to be part of that. So I'm sure there's a lot of challenges that we don't see as civilians, um, you know, that you experience behind the scenes. So, you know, what are some of those challenges and how can we as a community support you? Um, I would say some of the hardest challenges are just being away from family. Um, not having that constant support group. Um, like I said earlier, you're having to pick up and move um, very frequently. Thankfully, you know, this way we have our family, it's still a good seven, eight hours away, but that's nothing compared to the 30 hour drive that it was from El Paso. Um, it would take you days to get there. Um, so being away from family, um, your constant support system is a big thing. And also just sometimes feeling like you're living the single parent life. Um, you know, whether uh, the service member is deployed or TDY in a way at trainings or um, classes or whatnot, uh, just having everything on your shoulders, knowing that, you know, from sunup till sundown, it's all on you. Um, but you also know that you got to get it done. There's no if, ands, buts about it. You just, you just do. So I would say that's, that's probably two of the, two of the hardest things, but I go back to, the bloom, you know, bloom where I'm planted, take advantage of what's around me um, and just get out and not to be cooped up in the house because that that's no fun. <laughs> well, what do you hope to gain during your time at Fort Knox? Hopefully it's two years-ish or yes. longer. Yeah. Yes, hopefully we'll be here a couple years. Um, I hope to gain just good friendships uh, that we gained in El Paso. Um, went out there with open mind just thinking, you know, if, if I meet some good friends for the time being great, if I meet lifelong friends, you know, that would be even better. Um, and thankfully that is what happened out there. Um, me and a group of several friends, we still keep up daily. We're constantly messaging back and forth and having that support group, even from thousands of miles away. Um, yeah, just to gain uh, true friendships, uh, really get involved in the community. 
to truly enjoy our time here. Um, uh, I had thought about volunteering uh, with MOPS um, at our local church. I did that uh, when we were in El Paso. I was the crafts coordinator for them. Um, so I'd attend all the leadership meetings. We would plan everything, um, all the behind the scenes work, which I enjoyed. Um, I have a Bachelor of Arts. Um, and so my degree is in, in studio art. And so I hadn't done anything artsy or, you know, really fulfilling for myself in the art area since college. And that was years between college and El Paso. And that was when I was finally able to jump back into my realm of, of what I loved and, you know, be able to put together crafts and different things just to get the moms, you know, a little bit out of their comfort zone, get their creativity flowing. And I just really enjoyed that about it. It was super fun. Well, it's interesting, I, you know, I didn't realize you had that art background. We might have touched on that, but um, the reason we were connected was because of also our shared interest and experience in higher education. So I'm sure it's gotta be tough also when you're making these moves and changes to continue with your career and um, kind of stay on a linear path. And um, those who know my background know my path has been kind of a, a, a little bit of a zigzag and into different areas from time to time. Uh, but I'd love to hear, you know, share more about uh, kind of your professional background and anything that you're looking for in terms of jobs, because we want to make sure to, to get the word out about you and the opportunities you're looking for and the type of employment that might be a good fit so we can hopefully help you find it. Well, thank you. Um, so as a student, I went to the University of Georgia um, and graduated with my Bachelor of Arts degree um, there within the art school. And then a couple years later, um, with odd jobs, you know, in between, uh, I made my way back to um, the same art school that I graduated from at UGA. Started out as an administrative assistant there um, in the front of the advising office. So all the students um, would come through every single semester, uh, majors, minors, prospective students, orientation. I mean, it was the, the office. <laughs> um, tons of fielding questions and uh, really being the jack of all trades. Um, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, knowing the student side, personally, having taken those classes that the students were asking about was huge. Um, and then being on the professional side of that, you know, I could could actually give advice of, you know, this is what you will be doing in the class. I've experienced it firsthand. Um, so I did that for a couple of years um, and just oversaw the office of our two advisors and our undergraduate coordinator um, and worked on everything you could imagine. Um, it was so fun. And then I moved on to be an academic advisor uh, for about two and a half years within that same office. Um, so my students that I met with, it was about 350 every semester that they would have to come into my office to speak one-on-one -on -one about uh, their classes, their plan for the um, that semester or following semesters, whichever ones they were registering for, um, any, uh, major minor questions they had. It was just a, you know, let's figure out what you need to do from here to keep on your track. Um, and I love that job. I never thought, you know, years ago, if you would have asked me, would you ever be an academic advisor? I'd probably say no. You know, that's, that's probably not my thing or, you know, whatever the case may be, but it was the most fun job I've ever had. I loved, um, you know, just the rewarding feeling um, kind of from the behind the scenes standpoint, you know, seeing those students orientation, giving them the initial tour of the art school and then seeing them all the way to graduation was just really cool. Seeing them walk across um, that stage. And, you know, I almost felt like, like the parent in the crowd, just, hey, hey, you know, I, I just loved it and built such um, like a trust and bond. Um, with my students. They knew that I was a former student. Um, I think just all of that helped um, them just to feel comfortable uh, to come talk to me. And um, so I really enjoyed that. Um, and as far as uh, jobs in the area, I've been looking at really anything administrative. Um, I've looked at ECTC um, positions since I am um, familiar with the higher education. Um, and positions within that, or um, either on base at Fort Knox Administrative there. Um, so I'm still on the search uh, right now, but I've been applying, um, but I know that the right one will come along. And in the meantime, I'm enjoying 
staying home with my kids, soaking up the time that I have with them. My, my oldest recently started a kindergarten yesterday, actually. So that, that has been quite a different dynamic in the house. Little brother doesn't know what to do. I almost don't know what to do. Like, you know, half of the house is missing during the day, but, but I'm enjoying my time doing that right now. Well, I'm blown away, Michelle, because it takes a lot of grit and intelligence and empathy and compassion to do those jobs in higher ed. And I have to say, um, you're right. It does feel like you're parenting in some ways. I, I could not have gotten through part of my degree without having an advisor that really cared and, and worked with me. So it's I, Megan, I'm dubbing her overqualified for whatever. Thank you. I know she's fantastic. And there's a lot of great opportunities in the community right now. We want to make sure you find the right one. So anybody that's listening right now and that's looking for someone dedicated and uh, really passionate about helping others, uh, we want to make sure to, to get the word out that you're here. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. And it was great to get to know you and hopefully I get to see you in person at some point. Um, my little one is in middle school, so I'm not quite mop mom anymore, but uh, definitely be up for a walk around Freeman Lake with you. Yes, definitely. That would be great. And I'm hoping one of the first things I had promised when we first connected was to host some kind of event where you could meet some other fantastic ladies. You've gotten to meet a couple of them so far, but there's more in our community. And I think that's what makes this region so special is that we want to connect you in with this network. You don't have to start from scratch, but it's really hard to get everyone together during COVID. And I know the virtual things, um, you know, my, my kids at least will not participate in any of that kind of stuff much longer with human family. And uh, I know it's the, the wine and Zoom is becoming um, less novel for all of us a year and a half into this. But um, thank you for your patience. We'll figure out some way to, to make some more introductions. Um, but definitely glad you could join us tonight. Yes, thank you so much. It was just, I mean, obviously talking to both of y'all is just a blessing, but even when we connected um, months back, you know, before we had even come to Kentucky, just knowing in the back of my mind, I know a person there, haven't met her face to face, but just knowing that I knew somebody to a brand new place I was going was huge. And, and just your, your advice and just help with everything thus far has been very, very appreciative. I, I thank you so much for that. And it was great to meet you, Holly, too. Thank you all so much for having me on. I've been looking forward to this. It was very fun. Well, I hope this whole year goes well for your little one. And um, I'm going to break fourth wall here. If you're watching and you want to hire Michelle, message us through Boss Lady Coaching at Be The Boss. <laughs> coaching.com. Also, uh, you can find us on Facebook at Boss Lady Coaching and Instagram as well. And uh, Michelle, we're not going to ask you to give out your cell number here, but we would absolutely love to, to make the connection. So uh, thank you both for your time. I hope everyone has a safe weekend and a wonderful week as we're all back to school next week, right? Yes, thank you. Y'all too. Until next time, we'll see ya. Bye. Bye.